on everybody, wanted to give you an update on today on your storm that's coming at the end of the week here. Um, high impact winter weather event with lots of snow, um, some mixing, some power outage, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the only thing we're kind of missing with the storm is strong winds. I don't think we're going to see really uh, any, uh, it'll, it'll be breezy in a few of the higher elevations and breezy on the backside, but not, not any damaging wind or anything like that. So um, that's really all we're missing in terms of what's going on. Here is our storm and it is impressive. This system here has wrapped up, has dropped a ton of snow and been blizzard conditions across the upper Midwest, um, or really kind of on the northern plains, I should say. Um, and then what's happening here, though, is it can't move any further. It can't ride out to the north and east, which is what our storms have been doing all uh, fall here. And when as they've been doing that, they've drawn, they've drawn in really warm air from the southeast. Um, and we've got more of a cold front to swing through with enhanced showers and heavy rain. Um, and then we get cold kind of on the back side of it. And we've had a lot of strong winds with storms like that. This storm can't do that because there's a big high pressure system here that's blocking it and also an upper ridge. Um, and so because it can't do that, because it's kind of stuck here, there's still all this energy and it, wants, it doesn't, it, but the energy is now kind of the, the best forcing. All of this air is mixed. So the temperature gradient has been pushed way down here to the southeast. So that's where we're going to get what's called kind of basically a secondary low is going to form here. And it is going to ride up along the east coast where there's um, also a temperature gradient happening here. And we're going to have that high pressure to our north funnel some colder air in for us and keep us cold. So most of our precipitation is going to be snow. Now, this is not um, the, under some circumstances, this would be an entirely snow event. But this time, it's not going to quite be that for all of us here across southern Vermont for a couple of reasons. One, this system is still quite strong, even though it's um, at this point starting to lose some some energy because it doesn't really have anything to to to, uh, to reinforce the low pressure system since it's well mixed the atmosphere but it's still pretty strong and certainly um it's still continuing to push warmer air in our direction um, from the southwest what's also going to happen is the high pressure is a little east and what's going to that's going to make for more of an easterly flow instead of a northeasterly flow with the storm and of course that's coming off a pretty warm atlantic we're still or, or relatively early in the winter season here so um, the Atlantic is still relatively warm for this time of year, so it's going to push warmer air in at kind of the low to mid levels of the atmosphere, and that's going to help water change us over to a little bit of rain uh, in some locations, mostly the valley locations, uh, because it's, wherever it's going to snow harder, which is going to be where we get some terrain enhancement and things like that, and also with a little bit of elevation, I think we're going to stay all snow for most of the elevation across southern Vermont, but if you're in the valleys, the Connecticut River Valley, and to a lesser extent in the Route 7 corridor, um, you'll get a little bit more mixing involved. Again, even those locations are going to see plenty of snow. We're going to get to that as we go forward. Um, I didn't want to talk a little bit about, uh, sorry, uh, before we get to the terrain issues, uh, here's radar. You can see lots of precipitation. There was a couple tornado warnings already this morning. Um, this has been a big se severe weather outbreak, big storm. Um, and what's going to happen here is we're developing our low pressure here. It's going to develop over South Carolina, right up just south of New York and across eastern uh, Massachusetts and then out to sea. Um, but it's going to be slow as well. This uh, upper level ridge and the blocking high is keeping everything from moving too quickly, um, which is why the precipitation is going to be a long duration event, probably close to 36 hours, maybe even 40 hours straight of precipitation. Um, not all heavy the entire time. That pretty much wouldn't happen because we'd be talking about feet and feet of snow. We're not talking about feet and feet of snow. But there will be some periods of heavy precipitation, particularly tomorrow morning. Or I mean, I'm sorry, Friday morning and then uh, kind of light to moderate snow that will continue, that will linger from Friday afternoon right through till almost daybreak on Saturday, it looks like. Let's take a look. I want to talk to you a little bit about terrain enhancement. Or Sorry, whoops, before we get to this map. Terrain enhancement um, and why that's going to matter on this storm particularly. With that really strong easterly flow, our mountains basically go north to south uh, in Vermont, uh, of course. And so whenever you're on the uh, – this is kind of set up to go from uh, – as the wind flies uh, – as the wind moves towards the mountain, it mountain in a mountain range, it can't go, it has to go up and over the mountain. It can't just pile up against it, right? So that forces more air up, which enhances the lift. And whenever you get lift to enhance, that's what causes precipitation. So you get heavier precipitation on the windward side of the mountains. And then on the lee side, that's the back side of the mountains where the wind is going, you get a reduced lift um, because the the because the air wants to kind of fill this space down here, and so it's gonna move down the mountain a bit. Now, our mountains aren't real. This happens very dramatically in places like the uh, uh, like the Sierras, Nevadas, and things like that, But um, because those mountains are much steeper and much taller than our mountains. But it does happen here as well. And so what's going to happen, especially with a storm like this, is um, you've got like the Monadnocks um, that are a little bit of uh, lift in western and southwestern New Hampshire. The 
wind will come up over them, and then you'll get a bit of a – you'll get less precipitation overall in places like the Connecticut River Valley because you'll have a little bit of this reduced lift. And then you have – and then, of course, you come up the greens, which are taller than the Monadnocks, and so those – you get enhanced lift on the east side of the greens to start. Now, the west side of the greens, um, you do have, like, the Route 7 quarter. It doesn't get shadowed quite as much because of all that shadowing of precipitation because – um, you have the tectonics right there as well, and, and the, the valley's very kind of a shallow, it's kind of a narrow valley, and so the air doesn't have time to really sink down into the valley quite as much. So you don't generally get shadowed. You get shadowed some, but not as much as you do in uh, western uh, kind of places like Keene, New Hampshire, and things like that through about Brattleboro or so before you start to get that enhancement again. So uh, with that in mind, what's it look like in terms of where it's going to snow? This is a little bit hard to see the background. I showed this map yesterday, but I think it's consistent to today. I think mostly snow for across most of us in southern Vermont. Uh, the only places I think might see some rain in the far, uh, like, southwestern corner of the state, this is probably even a little too far north, probably anywhere basically from Manchester, or sorry, uh, from like Arlington uh, west, south and west, west of Route 7, um, down through Bennington, essentially, and uh, it gets a bit of a uh, chance to change over to rain. I think also certainly um, a lot of areas along the Connecticut River Valley, and that could sneak up the chances of rain, could sneak quite a ways up the Connecticut River Valley. So I think Brattleboro definitely sees some rain. I think Bellows Falls, even Springfield, even a place like um, – even as far north, maybe not quite as far north as West Lebanon, I do show that, but I think that they probably say mostly snow up that direction, like White River Junction. But if you're down in Windsor, I think there's a chance to change to um, some rain as well. So that's sort of the overall, and if you don't change the rain, you're at least going to get drier because you're, you're going to get shielded from some precipitation. So what does it look like in terms of snowfall totals? And I want to say these, if anything, are potentially a little conservative. But I think this is probably where we're going to end up. I do think you're going to get enough mixing in that it's going to be kind of three to six slushy inches of snow. Um, you probably you might have six inches, and then you get some rain that kind of knocks it down to four, three or four, um, right along the Connecticut River Valley. Um, so that's towns, basically, right, not even in, in even part of a town like in Springfield. If you're um, kind of on the east side of Springfield, um, you could. Sorry about that. Um, getting a tone there. That's not for me. So uh, if you're on the east side of Springfield, you're looking at uh, you could be uh, two or three inches of snow less than if you're on the west uh, west side of Springfield as you start to head up the hill a little bit into Chester. All right, so five to ten inches for the vast majority of kind of the transition towns that are kind of before you get into the white mountain, into the green mountains. This is the area where definitely we could be um, the five to ten is maybe not even a big enough range. Um, uh, five is probably a pretty solid bet for most of these places, but ten could be even a little bit more depending on how much mixing happens in these locales. And this may need to be adjusted a little bit tomorrow as we get some more model data. Then as we get up uh, higher up uh, places, so like uh, if you're in the in the in the lower spots in the mountain towns, so like in Londonderry, I live in the low spot in Londonderry, but I'm still a thousand feet or so. Um, looking at 8 to 14 inches of snow in a lot of those locations across southern Vermont. And then anything above about 1,500 feet, 12 to 18 inches, um, you could even maybe put a plus on those 18 inches. I think we're going to see a lot of snow in those locales. The places I'm concerned about for um, power outages are kind of in the transition zones here. Um, those places where we don't really see much rain, but the snow is very heavy and wet. So I think um, uh, that could be in the places that see like that 8 to 10 to 12 inches of snow. That's kind of the, the potential danger zone, I think. Um, so basically anybody, if, if everybody above 750 feet should be a little bit prepared for power outages. I think if you get above 2,000 feet, uh, your only really problem there is that most of your power comes from places lower than that. So that's a potential problem. But in terms of uh, your snow will start to get fluffier, not fluffy, but not quite as sticky above 2,000 feet, but it's between 750 and 2,000 feet that I think it could be problematic. So you want to be aware of that because this could be one of those times where we get a pretty good uh, amount of widespread power outages. Maybe not. That's a very close call. It's almost impossible to tell for sure until it happens. Um, it's the difference of a degree or two, and a degree or two not just at the surface, but at two or three different parts of the atmosphere as to how sticky the snow is. It's almost impossible to tell that the setup is right for us to potentially get it. So if it doesn't happen, we'll all be thankful because nobody wants to lose power for a few days. But I do want you to know it's definitely a possibility. And so you should be prepared, and these could be the kind of things where you could lose power for a couple of days potentially in some spots. Again, not a guarantee. Hope it doesn't happen, but you should be starting to prepare for that across basically anywhere across southern Vermont, particularly those places above 750. All right, so details. So snow starts just, bet uh, just between, or sorry, about between 10 and 12 p.m. Or 12 p.m. 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. Sorry, lots to go over. Thursday night. Snow continues till around daybreak on Saturday. It's the heaviest till about noon on Friday. Then we do start to go to more light to moderate accumulating snow Friday afternoon and overnight. 
Where Children's Rover occurs, it will happen Friday morning before everyone changes back to snow Friday afternoon. Um, so what's going to happen in a place like Brattleboro, where you are, I think, going to change over, is you'll see three, four inches of snow Thursday night into Friday morning, maybe even five inches of snow. And then you'll change to rain, and then you'll change back. You'll probably get a place like Brattleboro, they'll only get like another inch or two, even though there'll snow. There'll be snow in the air for almost uh, for the better part of 12 hours after it changes back, but it probably won't accumulate more than an inch or two. School cancellations Friday are a near certainty. That's uh, basically everywhere, because even in the places that are going to change, it's going to be rough to start. Maybe a few places will be able to get away with just delays, but I think basically everybody's going to be canceled. Power outage problems looking likely in some locations. We talked a little bit about where that might happen. I'll try to get more detail on that as we go, but some of that's not going to be able to be held for sure until it happens, which is the hard thing about these kinds of power outages. Roads will be bad for all of Southern Vermont Friday morning. Everybody's going to be, it's going to be a rough commute. Conditions will improve Friday evening, but they won't be great still because accumulating snow will still be falling. Western facing slopes, the, the wind direction will change around to kind of from the northwest. And instead of the eastern facing slopes getting more snow, it'll be the western facing slopes then. So those places uh, that often get upslope snow on the west side will do better out of this kind of accumulation. They could get more of their accumulation actually then. Uh, places like Snow Valley, uh, or along Route 11, Bromley, um, Route 9, the western part of the side of Route 9 towards uh, east of Bennington would be places like where that could be problematic. Areas below 750 feet will mix with a good deal of rain during the middle part of the day Friday. Areas between 750 feet and 1,500 feet will mix a little, but I think are mostly snow. Above 1,500 feet, I think mostly all snow. Power outage is most likely 1,000 feet to 2,000. Everybody who's basically above 750 feet, or really everybody should be somewhat prepared. Everybody who lives not right in and along the Connecticut River Valley should be prepared for the potential for some significant power outages. Again, not sure exactly when that will happen, but that could be the biggest potential problem with this kind of system. Um, and if they're widespread enough, they start to get to the point where it's going to take a while to get things going again. So not a guarantee. Everybody, nobody wants that. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but I want you to be prepared for it. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow morning with another look at this storm and hopefully some more details on where I think power outages are most likely and if any of the snowfall totals need to be changed. And um, yeah, so thanks for joining me and we'll be back, like I said, tomorrow morning.